with all the right curves. A sensual delight that's a cut above the rest. And it's love at first light. The, the sexiness of a cigar is about the story behind the creation of the cigar. Cigars are turning a new leaf. The experience itself, you get a relaxed sense of peace and of well-being and all's right with the world. So we're turning up the heat and shedding light on cigar etiquette, pairings, and storing. All in search of the perfect smoke. or just a beginner. In the next half hour, we're showing you everything you need to know to become a true aficionado. Tucked in the hills of Los Angeles, we're visiting Vin Lee at his Bel Air estate. He's the founder of the most exclusive cigar club in the world. The Beverly Hills Cigar Club is a, an association of celebrities and executives and, and wealthy individuals from around the world, quite candidly, that come in and they, uh, they uh, socialize with each other. It's a fantastic time for guys to get together and, and enjoy cigars. Membership in this club affords them the opportunity to connect, travel, and socialize with like-minded people. Members also receive a hand-selected variety of the finest cigars in the world. We have advanced preview of some of the finest products coming out today. Our lead cigar, the Goldwyn, has been aged for 20 years. We purchased the inventory from different suppliers, manufacturers that have been curing and aging their, these blends for sometimes decades. And for some, it's just a natural extension of their already luxurious lifestyle. The cigar business is, very, is a very sexy business. It's always been a symbol of success, and, um, and it actually makes you feel, because you get to take time to slow down and enjoy your day. But to truly appreciate a cigar, you should know a little history. Christopher Columbus is credited for introducing cigars to Europe after observing indigenous people smoking rolled tobacco leaves in Latin America. And just like that, the practice spread into the 20th century and put Cuba on the map as the premier exporter. That is until 1962, when President John F. Kennedy imposed a trade embargo, boycotting Cuba's communist government and banning Americans from purchasing Cuban cigars. As a result, Cuban seed and the craft have spread throughout the world. Like Nicaragua and Brazil and Peru, and created some phenomenal product that competes, if not is superior to, the Cuban market. Nowadays, you don't even need a Cuban cigar to say you've had a good smoke. You don't need an Italian sports car or French champagne either. They're fantastic, but you'll find that there's a lot available on the market that's actually legal. All fine cigars share three things. First, the filler, which are aged whole tobacco leaves. The binder is the part of the cigar that actually holds everything together from the inside. The binder leaf is elastic, so it can hold the cigar together before it's finally wrapped. The, the most vital part of a cigar is the wrapper. That's where you're going to pull all of your pleasure and all of your taste from. Oftentimes, it is the highest quality leaf in the whole entire composition of the cigar. Rollers go through a process of deveining the leaf to give it a polished, smooth look. But not all cigars are created equal. Selecting a fine cigar is like finding a wife. You really have to spend a lot of time going on a lot of first dates, taking your time, and getting to know what it is that you want to enjoy. And the best part about a cigar, you only have to commit for an hour. We have time, so let's give it a shot. I mean, how hard could it be? Let me show you what I want you to do. All right. You really want to kind of pucker, kind of pull? Gotcha. You have to draw a little bit more. OK, that didn't work very well. Keep rolling back and forth. Oh, you, you blew us out. I'm not very good at this, apparently. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm no cigar aficionado just yet. 
So Vince suggested I should expand my knowledge before I try another one on for size. This humidor that we're in right now is really well stocked. And so you come in, it could be overwhelming when you first come in. Not sure what you're looking for. Um, a lot of it is brand recognition. Uh, your tobacconist is a great place to start. And so I like to ask the tobacconist, what do you recommend? Here's what Brian recommends for a novice like me. A beginner, uh, I always recommend a smoother cigar. This cigar is a very easy cigar to smoke. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, more of a Lancero size. It's real thin, long. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy smoke to, to have, and this will probably last you about uh, maybe 20 minutes. With a better grasp on cigars now, we're meeting with a tobacconist to learn proper care. But first, here's some cigar trivia. True or false, President John F. Kennedy ordered a lifetime supply of Cuban cigars the day before he issued the embargo? That is true. The evening before the 1960 embargo was signed, he sent out his minions to make sure he had a lifetime supply of Cohibas before he shut the borders down to Castro. Vin introduced us to a tobacconist in Sherman Oaks who's been providing quality smokes to some famous faces for quite some time. Hopefully he can give us some more insight. What we set out to accomplish, 1977, that's the year we opened, was to have a lot of cigars uh, representing all the major countries that manufacture cigars, price them properly, and store them properly. And when you say properly conditioned, I, you know, I've learned a little bit that obviously you have to keep them moist, but what are the exact conditions that you have to create? Well, there's a set of numbers that's used that's 70-70, which is variable, but it's 70 degrees temperature, 70% humidity. And that's the ideal. And so why is that particular temperature and humidity um, important? First of all, cigars themselves hold a certain amount of moisture. There's about 23% of the cigar is moisture. Whenever a cigar tends to either dry out or get overhumidified, everything changes. Is there a way to tell externally that sure. it's a good cigar? Sure. Well, you can just take this in your hand and just gently press on it. And if you were to roll it, and even if you were to roll it next year, there's a slight rustling sound, but there's no cracking or crunching. That's a sign of a dried out cigar. Wow, I didn't realize it was so delicate. I mean, yeah. there's definitely, it's a finesse, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to it. And it's really, to some degree, an art form. It's certainly a craft. And those who do it well make great cigars, and those who don't make mediocre cigars. Cigars vary not only in color, but also in size and shape. I've read that there's different shapes. I've heard torpedo and pyramid. What does that all refer to? Okay, that's describing how cigars are shaped. In the cigar industry, this is called a parejo. And what that implies is that the sides are parallel all the way through the cigar. Most cigars fit that. The other term for a cigar that's not a parejo is a figurado, figured, which means shaped. The most common of which is a torpedo. And a torpedo is a cigar that starts wider at the bottom and narrows to a point at the top. A pyramid is more gradually tapered. And a perfecto is a shape that, for the most part, narrows at both ends. These variables will also give you a different smoking experience. Size is about how much time you have to smoke and how comfortable you feel with the cigar. Ring gauge is the description of the thickness of the cigar broken down into 60 fourths of an inch. So if this were a 64 ring gauge, it would be one inch across. It's a 50 ring gauge, so it's 50 60 fourths of an inch. And there are some popular combinations that can be easily identified by name, like a Robusto or a Churchill. But what size or shape you pick is simply a matter of preference. You may enjoy the way a thicker cigar smokes because it burns more slowly and there's more of the blend to taste, but maybe you're just self-conscious holding a thick cigar in your mouth. By smoking a torpedo or any other shaped cigars, you get to put the narrow end in your mouth so it's more comfortable for you, but you get the qualities of the thicker cigar. And once you've purchased a cigar, you should know the proper way to care for it. Luckily, humidors come in all shapes and sizes and do the work for you to ensure a cigar's longevity.
All of them should have at least this one thing in common, a lining of Spanish cedar. And the reason that Spanish cedar is used, it imparts its own flavor that gets into the tobacco, it retains moisture well, and it just naturally goes with cigar tobacco. Then you have the source of humidity. And in this box, it's built right in. It emits humidity for about a month at a time before you need to refill it. Up here is a hygrometer. The nice thing about a digital is it gives you a readout of temperature and humidity, usually accurate to within 2% in either direction. Those are the basics, and the rest is purely for appearances. Depending on what you pay, a humidor can be a long-term investment, one you can pass along to a future generation. Uh, I'm using a humidor my father used when he was younger than I am, so they can go for many generations properly maintained. There are also special tools for cigars, from cutters to cases, and everything in between. The most traditional way of cutting a cigar is the guillotine. And this is a little unusual version of a guillotine in that it's held from the side and pressed together. A variation of it is the scissor. Same idea, but you can manipulate it well. You're holding both handles. Then there's the punch cut. They make a circular cut. It's usually about a quarter of an inch in diameter, enough to draw without removing too much of the cigar so that it doesn't tend to get chewed up or fall apart. And then the other popular style is called the V or wedge cut. And it makes a V notch cut out of the cigar. So that both leaves tobacco on the edges and makes a deep cut for drawing a lot of smoke through it. Which is the best? It's up to the individual. As for lighting, your best bet's with the torch. They, they work on butane gas, not fluid, which is clean. It has no smell. It has no taste. You can also find double and even triple torch styles. If you're smoking today's popular thick ring gauge cigars, it takes a little bit of work to get it evenly lit, even with a torch if it's a single flame. But when you double or triple the amount of flame, you have more coverage, and you can get an even light more quickly. Another popular accessory is a cigar case. It's not meant to store them or humidify them. It's meant to carry them elegantly. The traditional style is called a telescoping case. It'll expand to accommodate different lengths of cigars, and they're made in different thicknesses to carry various, but most of them will accommodate a variety of sizes. Some of them aren't articulated like that, but rather leave it up to you how you want to arrange the cigars inside. And some people just want to carry one at a time. Drop your favorite cigar in, and you're ready to go. Now we've covered the basics. Up next, we'll meet with a sommelier to learn how to pair the cigar with the right drink. But first, another trivia question. True or false? The ring gauge of a cigar dictates its potency. False, false. You can find some ascots, the tiny petite cigarillos, that are more potent than, than a ring gauge 60. Sometimes the best things in life come in pairs, and the same can be said for cigars and spirit. So Vin is taking us to meet his friend and sommelier Dana in search of the perfect pairing. Welcome. One of the things that I've learned as a sommelier is to taste consciously. I think it's important to really think about what's going on as far as the flavors that you're experiencing and also as far as the textures, what's going on in your mouth when you when you take a sip of something. When I think about cigar pairing like I would think about food and wine pairing, one of the tenets of food and wine pairing is that there's an there's an opposites attract kind of a thing. And when I think about the flavor characteristics of a cigar, they're very earthy flavor characteristics. So I think if you're thinking about wine with cigars, something with a lot of fruit is going to pair very nicely with that. A, a wine with a lot of fruit, maybe a, a, a new world wine that, that has dominant flavors of fruit. Everybody has a different palate, everybody has different taste. And, I'm a person who doesn't believe in saying no to the opportunity to taste anything. And so I'm, I'm just likely to, to try something new. With endless possibilities, pairing a cigar with the right beverage can be overwhelming. But Dana has some tips. So what have you got? Well, we've got uh, the Macanudo 1968. Wow. 
which is uh, a very rich cigar. I think with this intensity, I would probably want to go with something that's a, a little bit, a little bit bigger. Maybe something a little bit boozier. I think the aged rum, the Methuselah aged rum, is an easy choice because there is that deep intensity, that deep richness to it. But there's also this, this sort of note of sweetness that would sort of calm the spice that I'm getting in the cigar. Okay, so let's see what, how about the punch here? A very rich, heavy, full-bodied cigar for you. It says Maduro Maduro on the box. Maduro Maduro, yes. So more than just Maduro. It's, it's double the Maduro, yes. <laughs> Wow. So tell me what you think of that. What I'm getting off this is almost more chocolate, like a, like a, like a bittersweet chocolate aroma. You can do what we talked about before, where you you add some of that sweetness to contrast the intensity. But with this, you can almost play like with like. The Hudson Rides, it's a really great product, and it's made in New York State. It's aged in oak, so there's some of the vanilla sweetness from the oak. With, with so many different kinds of beers on the market, your micro brews and your fruity brews and your Pabst Blue Ribbon. What, what, what should our clients be looking for to match it with any number of cigars? Personally, I think beer and cigars is a great, a great pair. This Bavaria is a, is a great choice. You can also go to those deeper, uh, more flavorful, flavorful beers. Uh, the Belgian ales, I think, are a, a great choice. Aside from finding a cigar's complimentary beverage, there's another essential element to consider. I think the situation always influences uh, a, a, great, a great tasting experience. I think it's very rare if you ask any sommelier about the best wine that they've ever tasted, that they tasted it alone in their apartment. <laughs> so what, you, what flavors are you tasting? When I'd smelled it without it being lit, I was getting uh, a spice, a, a subtle spiciness, mm -hmm. like cloves and almost Indian spices, almost like curry and coriander, and I'm picking that up now as I'm as I'm puffing. Let's do this. There's a little sweetness to it. How do you think the pairing will be with that and the cigar? There's a beautiful stone fruit characteristic. Peaches. Nectarines and a and a hint of honey. Um, Thank you. That will sort of calm the the earthiness of your cigar and the spiciness of my cigar. It's a very pleasant textural experience. To the good life. To the good life. To the good life. To the good life. Well, now I'm starting to feel a little more confident, so stick around, because next we'll learn all about cigar rituals and put our skills to the test. But first, our final trivia question. True or false, cigars are rolled between the thighs of virgins. Uh, the truth is, is that, no, that is a fallacy. Where do you get that from? Uh, th there was a story th that went out that, um, one of the writers had visited a, a, a plant where the girls were actually laying the leaves across their legs. And so he took it upon himself to cast the story that they were virgins rolling up cigars for this particular brand. Our next trip takes us to the Ceniza Cigar Lounge to mingle with some of the Beverly Hills Cigar Club members and learn their rituals. Well, the first thing, the biggest thing is picking the right cigar for the time of day or the event, you know. The whole cigar is like a lifestyle. It's, you know, you're, I'm doing it to, and wine at the end of the day, have a glass of wine and smoke a nice fine cigar with buddies. Basically, um, when I'm cutting a cigar like this, I'll, and you'll just uh, kind of lick the end of it because that's where you're going to light it. You don't want it to come apart. And then I'll lick this end of it as well. And then it's just going to moisten it a little bit so that when you do cut it, you don't get a bunch of loose ends. Instead of just cutting it flat, I'll cut it a little bit of an, an angle, and it just it just works better for some reason when you're smoking it, you know, just a little bit of angle like that. 
and then when you're lighting it, a lot of people just go to light it, and it'll be uneven. So a lot of time, you, you kind of heat it up a little bit beforehand. What I'm going to do is just kind of heat up the edge of it. You know, I just turn it in my mouth when you're lighting it. So I save all my bands, and I have, a, like, a little journal. And I tape the band in there, and then I put what kind of smoke it was, how it tasted, was it a uh, rich body, um, it was a Maduro wrapper, and then uh, I rate it on the scale of like one to 10, would I smoke it again, and then I put who I'm smoking with. All right, I think it's finally safe to give this another try. Okay. Do you wanna light it? Sure, I'll light it. Okay. So just roll it around a little bit before you start inhaling it. Okay. Kind of heat it up. And then go ahead. Yep. And then turn the cigar while you smoke it, or while you light it. All right, looks good, I think you got it. And now I've heard it's taboo to like, once the, once it's out, you don't crush the ash. Right? Well, even when you're smoking it, you don't want to crush the ash. Usually, you just kind of roll it around the edges. You don't want to slam it down or anything like that, because sometimes it'll put it out. Everybody has their own ways of doing it. You know, it's just whatever's comfortable, whatever you're used to. And as long as you have a good cigar, you know, I don't really think there's a bad cigar. It's just what's what you like and what you enjoy. And while the club may be exclusive, the experience is always best when shared. For me, smoking cigars, I like to do with people, only people who love it. People who appreciate the flavors, who appreciate the celebration of life. Like, that's what this is, right? Aren't we just kind of celebrating? You know, you come together to celebrate or to uh, all enjoy something that you have in common. I actually learned more from these guys <laughs> than I knew in, in the beginning. They actually had brought more experience from outside. Uh, every person that has, has, has come in and has offered such a such a unique point of view. When you have a pairing of people from two different walks of life sharing something in common, they come together, you know, the result is something incredibly beautiful. You have human interaction. It's the, it's the soundtrack to the human condition, so to speak. Cigars are truly one of those luxuries that can be enjoyed by people from any walk of life. I think more and more now when I spend time in the tobacconist and the cigar lounges, uh, you see all array of people from somebody that's been smoking for many years or passed down from their grandfather or their father to somebody who's brand new, may not be a, a, a cigar enthusiast at all and just wants to come and check it out. It's a relaxation. And it's a diversion and, to some extent, even a getaway from all the stuff that bothers you during the course of a day. And I think that cigars have a complexity and a depth to them. They have a story. They have a history. It's just like making wine or making scotch or making bourbon. It's, it's a real piece of artistry. The cigar lifestyle is really about connecting with people. It's about socializing with people, having everyone come together around a similar activity and being able to share and enjoy. And oftentimes it becomes about everything else but the cigar in your hand. Well, we've covered a lot of ground here, and thanks to the Beverly Hills Cigar Club, we've learned everything from cigar basics to proper care, etiquette to pairings. And while it takes a little more than just a half hour to become a true aficionado, we certainly hope that we've fanned the flame. Now go and put some spice in your life. Until next time, I'm Hanine Smith.